In this lesson, we're going to talk about the ratification of the Constitution. To this point, we've talked about the disagreements and the compromises. First, it was between the big and the small states over how many representatives. Then it switched to North and South over the issue of slavery and whether or not slaves would be counted. Once they got through those, there were still more debates um, and kind of figuring things out. But after a few more weeks, they're ready to write a constitution. James Madison will end up writing most of it. Um, he had the best notes. If we think back, he didn't, he wasn't assigned to be the note keeper. He just did it on his own. And because he had the best notes, they're going to ask him to write it. Others will help, but he's known as the father of the constitution because he wrote the majority of it. Ben Franklin's quote, I agree to this constitution with all its faults. What he was saying here was, I support the constitution, even though it has flaws. When you get 55 people in a room and they try to write up a plan for a new government for a country, you're never going to get things perfect and you're never going to get anyone to agree. So he's not saying the constitution is perfect, but it was the best that they could do and he was happy with it overall. So they then sign it, but out of the 55, 16 did not sign it. And they had different reasons for not signing it. Some of them didn't sign it because it didn't have the Bill of Rights. We'll talk more about that next unit. The Bill of Rights are your first 10 amendments that freedom of speech, freedom of religion, things like that. Others from larger states didn't sign it because they felt like it gave the smaller states too much power. So the majority signed, but 16 do not. And we have this painting. This is how we started the unit out, unit off. Um, famous painting, George Washington up on the stage. And it looks like, I don't know, I don't think we can tell. Maybe people are coming up to sign it. There is the actual Constitution. So they agreed to it. They sign it. However, it doesn't go into effect until the states agree on it. So they made copies, they sent them out to the 13 different states. Those states sit down and decide if they're going to agree to it. And they need to get nine of the 13 to agree on it in order for it to pass. So this next part deals with people that supported the Constitution and people that did not. And they were known as Federalists or Anti-Federalists. So real quick. Supporters, people that supported or agreed with the Constitution or are known as Federalists. Some of the main Federalists were James Madison, of course, the writer, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay. So they are arguing that states should pass the Constitution. They gave different arguments. A couple arguments they gave. This is probably the most common one, the one I think that makes the most sense. They argued the Articles of Confederation was weak. And we needed a stronger government if the country's going to survive. And they said that because it had three branches of government, that the power was spread out to the different branches so that one branch couldn't get too powerful. They could kind of check and watch over the other branches so they didn't do things they weren't supposed to. On the flip side, we had people that were against it. And they were called anti-federalists. And they had different reasons why they were against it. They argued that with the Constitution, we're going to pay too many taxes. Hopefully you're picking up that taxes was a big theme to these people. Um, they also argued that the president would have too much power. It reminded them of a king, in particular King George. And they also argued that it thought, they thought it took away power from the states. So you had two sides kind of going back and forth in the end, obviously the states agreed to support the Constitution, and then it went into effect.